now I want to look, I want to view with you kind of the next stage from the T-Bone Walker style. And uh, we're going to be talking about the great one himself, B.B. King, who I have the pleasure of having seen when I was way back in my college days, and I've had the enjoyment to see him grow in his career to tremendous success, and he deserves every bit of it because as an artist, he's also, in my opinion, continued to progress and advance. His thing, very special, but it's also shared with people like um, the late Albert King and the Freddie King. Well, gee, they're all the King, the King family. None of them, I don't believe, are related. But whereas with T-Bone, we were talking about the slow blues, I'm going to put my pickup switch in the middle so I'm getting both pickups and work on some shuffles. Uh, you know, BB. the B.B. King, Freddie King, Albert King thing. Now, Albert, I'm not going to get too much into Albert's style verbatim. First of all, he was left-handed. Second of all, he had the strongest fingers this side of Hendrix. He would, for example, if he was in the key of C, if he were playing with us now, okay, there's your tonic. Also, I think he tuned his guitar different. But anyway, on one string, he'd probably do nearly an octave or most of an octave, octave scale. Like I'm here on the, uh, the uh, 16th fret of the second string, and I'm working off this blue note, this minor third blue note, E flat down to C. Albert would bend up to the fifth up there. I'm not going to do that, because even if I were able to do that, we'd have to interrupt this video for me to change strings. But just be aware that Albert was doing some great stuff with the bending. And Freddie, too. Now, Freddie is extremely, he had this Texas thing. He was extremely intelligent in his choice of compositions. He didn't just do blues 12 bar. He would do things where he would kind of start on the four chord a lot of times, his compositions. They might also stay on the one chord for a longer than usual time period. But uh, Freddie had a real nice way of bending on the th third and second strings. Now, you know very well the third and second strings are not tuned to the same intervals, that is to say, the, the space between notes in the scale, as all the other ones. So. Whereas, if I'm going to lay my first finger down across the eighth fret of strings two and one, I get that sound. If I move it over and cover strings three and two, still on the eighth fret, I get that. It's like a more mellifluous chord, two-note chord. And of course, if I work off this blue note, this E flat, if we're in the key of C, I can do some Nice bending. Nice thing on the E flat and the G remains constant. And sometimes, now here's one way of doing this next thing. This next thing, I'm going to take this up and go up a whole step, which just means going up two frets. This is kind of a real sexy way of expressing this idea. You hear this a lot in blues. 
it's like this seventh, it's a seventh chord thing to a four chord thing to the, to the minor. But when you do it this way, it sounds real precise and almost pianistic. But if you bend, and in this case I'm using my second finger of the left hand next to my third finger on strings three and two respectively. So I get this thing. Now it's interesting to note that this kind of lick became extremely popular when I was growing up, and I believe it was Chet Atkins. Legend has it, I'll have to ask him, Chet Atkins, who played a particular very hip country rock uh, solo on one of the Everly Brothers records that used this lick, and I'm sure he got it from one of the kings. Anyway, it's a great device. There's another way to do it. If you especially have unwound third, I don't have an unwound third, but that shouldn't stop you from being funky. You can still be funky and bluesy and soulful with a wound third. You can pull it away from you, you're going to almost pull the second string off the neck, but you'll get a little unexpected sound that I kind of like. It's the sound of that string going off the neck. There's nothing wrong with that. That's all part of the, uh, that's all part of the package. Now, when you're working out of this position, you're kind of locked into it, and there's really not a problem with being locked into that because in this level of blues playing, so much of it is just in the mode. That is to say, same scale, same notes. Your creativity is within that structure of the pentatonic scale. So it's OK to just stay in that position and work out all night if you can develop the imagination to get some rhythmic things going. You might be going, now, we started out with a shuffle, but same tempo, different feeling. We can do this straight eight thing. interesting to note that so much of this is really an expression of a minor scale. This is part of the mystic beauty of the blues, in my opinion, um, because a lot of times your chord people are going to be playing like a seventh chord, and they're going like in, in that tune by Little Richard, to use a real obvious example. doing that, you get one guy doing this, well, he's not playing everything the same velocity, he's going one, two, three, one, two, three, three. and the lead guy's going like that. You get yourself a real kind of almost Baroque type of counterpoint going just on the blues because each instrument, supposing it's just three guitars playing, has their own little niche worked out. Notice the registers. The guy who's playing the Lucille lick is in this register. So he's down in the bottom. This guy here playing the C7 rhythm is in the middle register. And then the lead guy's up on top. That's how you stay out of each other's way. Of course, it's the responsibility of the lead guy to really use that imagination and with the notes at his disposal, really get creative within that structure. I said it before, I'll say it again. This level of blues, like so many levels of improvisation based on blues, is really, we're talking about freedom within the structure. You have to develop your freedom within that structure. You don't want to start going outside the lines at this point. We go outside the lines later on when we get beyond McLaughlin into Miles Davis, et cetera, et cetera. It's all blues, though.